In this problem, we've got people that are lining up to buy tickets for a concert. They start out at noon, and what we have is a function L that gives us the length of the line, the number of people that are waiting in line to buy tickets. We're told that it's twice differentiable, that implies continuity of both the original function as well as its first derivative. And and as well as its second derivative, not that that matters in this particular case. And we have a table that gives us values at certain selected times. Okay, so our first task is to estimate the rate at which the number of people are waiting in line is changing. Okay, so how fast is the change in the number of people waiting in line? So they're asking us to find dl dt. Well, we don't have the function in symbolic form, and so we can't evaluate it at 5.5. So what we're doing, understandably, has to be some kind of an approximation. And we notice that we know the height of the function at t equals 4 and at t equals 7. And so we're just going to compute the average rate of change over that interval as our best approximation for the rate of change at t equals 5.5. So what we're really just doing is L of 7 minus L of 4 over 7 minus 4, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And from that, we simply get 150 minus 126 over 3, and that gives us 8 people per hour. It says that the length of the line, the number of people waiting in line, is changing at a rate of about 8 people per hour. And it's positive, meaning the line is getting longer between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. In B, they want to know the average number of people waiting in line. Now, you find an average again by the average of a given function by doing um, an integral from the interval over which they want the function evaluated divided by the width of that integral interval in this case we're going to use a trapezoidal approximation the width of our interval is going to be 4 minus 0 so we're going to be multiplying by 1 quarter and now we have to do the trapezoidal approximation. Well, the trapezoidal approximation for each individual trapezoid is the average of the two heights from the endpoints times the width of that particular trapezoid. And so we write first the height at time 0 plus the height at time 1. We want the average of that times its width, and that width is just 1. Then we want the average of the two heights at time 1 and time 3. And we multiply that by the width of that trapezoid. That's going to be 2. And then we want the average of the two heights at 3 and 4, and times the width of that trapezoid, which is 1. Putting that all together, we get, let's see, each of these adds up to uh, 138. This average is 
going to give us 332. Again, after we've multiplied by 2. And this last one is going to give us 151. Add that all up and divide by 4. And we finish with 155.25 people. The average length of the wait in line. Now for part C, we have to make sure we understand what's really being discussed. And that is, we have to find when the derivative of the number of people waiting in line must equal zero. Well, the only thing that constrains derivatives to have to equal zero is if the derivatives themselves change from positive to negative or negative to positive. And therefore, they'll cross the axis, the x-axis at that point, And each one of those times will give us a zero. And so we're going to use the intermediate value theorem but we're going to use the intermediate value theorem on or as applied to the derivatives. So let's just plot out these points so we have a sense of what this all looks like. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The different heights it goes something like this. It goes up until it gets to the second hour. Then it goes down. I'm sorry. It goes up until it gets to the third hour. Then it goes down. At the fourth, it goes up to the seventh hour, and then down eighth and ninth hours. Something like this. Okay. So the point is, we see slopes going upward at this point. We see slopes going downward at this point. See slopes going upward again here and then we have slopes going downward again here. And so we can see that there are three different places where the slopes change sign. Here the slope has to be going from positive to negative at some place. Here the slope has to be going from negative to positive at some place has to be going from positive to negative at some place. And so, right, we see that there are three points. Or, writing it a different way, we see that L prime is certainly positive uh, L prime is certainly found to be positive at certain points over this interval. Not at every point, because we don't know the function, but we know that there is at least one place where L prime is positive over this interval. We know that there is uh, some point on the interval from 3 to 4. You know it's positive somewhere. Okay, we know on this interval that it's negative somewhere. We know on the interval from four to seven that it must be positive somewhere. And we know that somewhere on the interval from 7 to 9, it must be positive. It must be negative somewhere. So because there are three sign changes, we can say that there are th at least three places where L prime of t must equal zero exactly. 
And again, that's part C. Let's go down finally to part D. And in part D, we really are uh, stepping off into a completely separate problem. In other words, the length of the line doesn't have anything directly to do with how many tickets are actually sold. And it's important in our own minds to see that distinction. They're simply giving us the rate at, t at which tickets are sold, and they're telling us that it's 550 t e to the negative t over 2. Okay, So that's measured in tickets per hour. Another way to look at this is it's the rate of change with respect to time of capital T, the number of tickets sold in total by the point T in time. So if we had capital T of 3, it would mean all of the tickets that have been sold between noon and 3 p.m. And the derivative of that is what this rate is that they're giving us. So then it's clear that the integral we want is from 0 to 3 of this rate of change of the number of tickets sold. And that means this is just this rate of change that they've given us. And we can evaluate that numerically. And the answer we get is approximately 972.784 people. They ask us to round, and so we'll call that 973 people.